new methods and media must be explored to motivate the students to learn and to help the teachers provide more effective instruction. In this classroom, the teacher is making use of several teaching aids such as chalkboard, television, models, slide projector, etc. There are various types of media used in teaching learning. Each medium has its own merits and demerits. Therefore, a teacher has to be well aware of the potentialities of a medium before using it in the classroom situation. Media is the physical means of communication that is arresting, processing and reconstituting visual or verbal information through various means. The means may be printed, graphic, photographic, electronic, mechanical or any other. Since there are various kinds of media aids, it is important to classify them. The main classification is audio, visual and audiovisual. Audio pertains to sound only. Visual pertains to visual only. Whereas audiovisual pertains to both sound and visual. Audiovisual aids are gaining a lot of importance in teaching learning activities. Experience and research have shown that we learn more than 80% through sight and more than 10% through hearing. Thus, the combined effect of audiovisual aids is more than that of either audio or visual aids. Visual and audiovisual aids are further classified as print and non-print. Print materials are the traditional and age-old materials such as textbooks, workbooks and laboratory manuals and have been used for hundreds of years. It is the non-print materials which have gained much importance recently. Non-print materials are further classified as non-projected and projected. Non-projected aids include charts, maps, specimens, models, experimental kits and realia. Projected aids are those which are projected on a screen using electrical or electronic gadgetry. Such aids may be overhead projector transparencies, slides, cinefilms, video films, CI packages, etc. Now we shall discuss these non-projected and projected aids in greater detail.
charts, maps and the graphic aids are the visuals that are represented on a plane surface. These are used to supplement and accompany text materials. One good visual which can secure and maintain attention and educate the viewer in the desired area is worth a thousand words. Charts and maps are generally used for independent study by individual learners and for small group interaction. World and country maps are one good example of this category. Specimens are nothing but a sample. They help in understanding properties and characteristics of a batch of materials which cannot be understood through pure verbal communication. Models are recognizable imitations of frail objects. They provide reality in simplified form and are useful in learning the structure, function and working of the original object. Experimental kits and trainer boards are very useful in learning and practicing various concepts and principles. These kits may be supplemented or accompanied by print materials. Specimens, models and experimental kits provide us vicarious experiences which evoke greater student interest. Real things provide live concrete experiences to learners through direct sensory contact. This medium is particularly useful for establishing correct initial concepts in the mind of learners. For example, visiting a dairy plant and observing its different operations has no substitute either by means of a lecture or any other media. A transparent visual is placed on the projector table to obtain bright and illuminated image on the screen. The name overhead comes from the fact that the projected image is behind and over the head of the speaker. The enlarged projected image of the visual obtained on the screen can be used to illustrate objects components, engineering and manufacturing processes. Overhead projector, though generally used for still visuals, can also depict motion in some cases, such as work power demonstration, working of IC engines, etc. It is a relatively cheap and versatile medium for classroom instruction. Slides and film strips are also used to provide still visuals to learners. Slides and film strips help to bring a real life situation into the classroom.
Film strips are particularly useful to show various stages of the process. For independent study, a tape slide sequence finds much use. The audio narration accompanying each frame of the slide helps understand things better. This medium has the advantages of light weight, compactness and moderate cost. shown by numbers and closed in circles. In our example, plaster wall is an activity and one and two are events marking the start and finish of this activity. The advantage that motion films have over slides, film strips and transparencies is that they provide vivid dynamic visuals which leave a greater impact on the learner. The behavior of multiple frames is similar to that of continuous beads. A load applied to one of the beads produces deformations and stresses in other beads through the rotations of the connecting joints. Any distant, past and complicated situation can be brought into the classroom using films. Video format is fast replacing cine films owing to its ease of production and handling. Though the production of video programs requires costly equipment and facilities, their duplication or multiplication is much cheaper. Required hardware such as VCR and monitor are also becoming cheaper with the increase in production. A video projection system may be used to obtain a larger and brighter image for larger groups. This industry is an indispensable economic activity and lakhs of artisans depend on it for their daily bread. Use of computer software for instruction is going to be a potential medium in the near future. Computer software can be used for presenting information, program materials, and visual illustrations in order to facilitate learning of concepts, principles, and problem-solving procedures. Development of suitable software for instructional purposes requires considerable expertise and training.
In this context, let us examine Dale's cone of experience, which lists 12 categories of media and experiences with their effectiveness related to a certain age group. The abstractness of the media goes on increasing from bottom to the top of the cone. At the base of the cone is placed direct purposeful experience which leaves greater impact with children coming into contact with real objects. As we go up the age scale, pictorial and other simulated substitutes can be employed for various experiences. At the pinnacle of the cone is verbal symbols which suggest learning by reading, an efficient method for sophisticated learners. While lower levels provide slow but sure learning experiences, the higher levels provide experiences that are fast but risky. For experiences in affective domain, however, the above mentioned relationship gets inverted. One has, therefore, to determine where on the scale is the best decision point for media selection. Since each medium has got its own potential, a teacher has to be careful in selecting media for use in teaching learning. Media selection may be considered as an integral part of lesson planning. The various factors to be considered while planning a lesson are what kind of learning is desired? How is the learning to take place? And who is to learn? Nature of learning task is decided by the objectives or learning outcomes which may fall in any of the three domains, namely Cognitive domain for learning of concepts, principles and procedures. Affective domain involving behavioral or attitudinal changes and psychomotor domain for learning and practicing skills. Learning activities involving various types of experiences are designed for achieving the stated objectives using specific media depending upon its capabilities. For example, a lecture session will be helpful for learning concepts and principles in cognitive domain. Whereas, direct hands-on experience would lead to acquisition of skills in psychomotor domain. The mode of teaching learning, that is, large group interaction, small group interaction, and independent study for individual students is another factor to be considered in the selection of media. For example, the use of a chart or a map may not be appropriate for presentation to a large group because of constraint of visibility, particularly for those sitting in the rear of the classroom.
Each learner has a different learning style. These variations amongst the learners may be with respect to their age, culture environment, physical, mental and emotional makeup. Learner characteristics therefore merit consideration in selection of media. This should however be done within the constraints of available resources and cost of technology. Some of the other general points to be considered in the selection of media include availability of standby facilities in case of failure of equipment power, etc. Supporting services for obtaining, installation and maintenance of required hardware and software. Availability of facilities in the classroom such as power sockets, appropriate furniture and curtains, Ease of interrupting the media to elicit learner response and provide feedback. And teacher competence for operating the required hardware. Specific guidance on media selection can also be obtained by making use of breadth flow diagrams. These diagrams have been designed keeping in view the mode of learning which may be independent study, small group or large group interaction. A teacher will have to ask himself various questions to finally shortlist the possible media he could use subject to availability of resources and cost. For example, in this flow diagram, applicable to independent study for individual learner, a teacher will ask himself if he wants to provide vicarious or sensory experience to the students. Whether the experience will provide audio, visual or both audio-visual experience, If audiovisual experience has to be given, then whether still or motion or the combination of the two is required. Suppose motion is to be shown, then a 16mm film and video film are the two possible alternatives. Out of the two, he will select the one available to him. We thus find that the teacher has a wide range of media to use in teaching learning. Therefore, according to any situation, a teacher should select appropriate medium so as to have effective and efficient learning.